So it has come to this. Um, guys, I am no longer drinking for Giants, wins, or losses. When we're Cowboys, losses, or Eagles, losses, or Rays, and losses, yo, which one of these sorry fuckers is going to the playoffs? That's all that really matters at this point. Well, let's get to the video. What's going on, YouTube? What's going on, Giants fans and family? This is Mustafa Love with Hearthstone Media. Thanks for tuning in again. But if this is your first time checking out the channel, please think about hitting the like or subscribe button to be notified the next time I make a video like this. I promise you that something like this. Um, I can't really. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> it won't happen to you if you hit the like or subscribe button. Or maybe it will if you don't. It's your call. Without further ado, let's get to it. So Giants fans, we have lost yet another game after we rolled high on a four game win streak. I was high as most thinking that we could potentially sweep out the rest of the season, but the Arizona Cardinals and Cleveland Browns and now the Baltimore Ravens have since brought all of us back down to a taste of reality. Now, I still remain mildly optimistic about the team, the team's future, and our playoff chances as they stand, and I am going to talk about that in a moment. First, I'd like to say this. For a recap of the Browns game, which I didn't get a chance to do, I saw a lot of talk on the Giants Wire. I saw a lot of talk on Twitter, a lot of talk in the Giants fans groups, and just in general, talking about the Cleveland Browns destroyed us. The Cleveland Browns did not destroy us we destroyed ourselves in that game we held with at times has been a high-powered offense which you see this week not that high powered and i knew baker mayfield was due for a dud just didn't come against our new york team it came against the other new york team why couldn't it came against our new york team because he looked reminiscent of joe montana in the game against us but the cleveland browns had just lost to the jets i, I was right to not fear them we gifted the Cleveland Browns the game against us and I think the coaches called the better game had we not chose to go for it on fourth down as many times we did and just kicked field goals we'd have been in a better position to win that game but that is water under the proverbial bridge and but again Cleveland Browns did not dominate us that game they rushed barely for 100 yards Baker Mayfield looked solid but they only scored 20 points the game ended with the score that it ended because we left points on the field for not deciding to kick field goals, which again, I think would have changed the trajectory of the game, not just gave us more meaningless points. But now we are to this game, which we did actually get dominated in. The Ravens ran all over us from that part of the field, that side of the field, and up there and everywhere. They ran all over us with their read option. Their read option was it's amazing. Lamar Jackson did, did great in it. The defense did as about as good as they could be expected to do in a situation where the offense wasn't really getting anything going. And again, the defense is at the, the detriment. The defense is basically playing at the detriment of the offense. The offense is not being able to move the change. Now, who takes the fault and blame in that? Is that the offensive play calling? Is that the coaching? Is that Daniel Jones? Is that a combination of factors? When I watched this game, I looked at a couple of things. I'm just going to touch on a couple of things, and then I'm going to get into the playoff talk. Crazy enough, the playoff talk. Daniel Jones needs help. Do I think Daniel Jones has the potential to be a franchise quarterback and our franchise quarterback? Yes, I do. I've seen great flashes in him when he had time and when he had receivers that could catch the ball. How often do you see games that are started off, you know, drives that are started off with multiple false starts back to back? Looks like a punt. It does, does it? Our offense, number 75. False start. How often do you see, you know, players have balls hit them in the hands on the third and four for a seven yard pass that would give them a first down that Austin Mack actually dropped wide open, hits you right in the hands, you drop the ball. On third down, a down that would have kept the drive going. Third and four, Ravens rush four, delayed pressure, and it's dropped by Austin Mack. Would have been a first down at the 42-yard line. False start, two 
or three consecutive times on a drive. You don't see that often. Getting sacked six times, not to mention the pressures and the hits. When you when you have things like that, a quarterback cannot expect it to be successful. Could Daniel Jones have done, done some things better in this game? Yes. Could all of the pieces of around him done better for him and for the team? Hell, yes, that was obvious. To get sacked on three straight plays. And again, this this was rem- the offensive line play was reminiscent of what I saw from them the first couple of weeks when Saquon was getting stopped in the backfield time and time and time and time and time again in the Pittsburgh game and in another game and another game before he was injured. It's kind of like, what do you expect from a quarterback when he's getting it? I'm talking not even just blindside runs. He's getting from both sides. You know, Daniel Jones didn't get a lot of help this game. Did he do much to help himself? Is he fully healthy? I wouldn't say yes, he is because, again, we saw another game where he was tentative on actually releasing out of the pocket. They didn't call any running plays for him. He didn't run the ball. I think they're still favoring that hamstring, and if they're favoring it that much, maybe he shouldn't be playing. That's a coaching thing. Is he healthy enough to play? Yeah, I think he's healthy enough to play. But he's not healthy enough to run the game plan that they probably would like to run with him, even though they didn't do it as much as I feel like they could have early in the season when he actually was fully healthy. It was games that he didn't run the ball at all. So now we lose yet another game. But Giants fans, hold steady because what I predicted in the last video is actually coming to pass. A team can win this division at 6-10, and 10, and we are all lined up, primed and ready for the taking to do that. This week, we did not win, need to win a game to remain in the playoff hunt. We just needed Cowboys to beat the Eagles and then Washington to lose. The Eagles season is all but over now. And now we just need the Eagles. We need the Eagles down far enough by losing to the Cowboys to then beat the Redskins, who I think they play in the last week, to knock the Redskins or keep the Redskins at six wins. Redskins will be six and ten. The Eagles cannot catch us because they will not be able to win six games. And then we just need to take care of business and beat the Cowboys. We still can win this division at six and ten, guys. And dare I say it, that's what I predicted a couple of weeks ago. So, Giants fans, do you want to make the playoffs? I don't know. I thought the Jets were tanking for Trevor and then they go out there and beat the Browns. I I don't know what we do now, how we feel now. How are you going to feel if we lose next week's game and then we're picking in the top 10? I haven't really looked at the standings. I guess I'll, I'll put them here and we can go over them now. If we lose next week and remain at five wins because the Falcons lost again. <laughs> I still know how they keep letting Dan Quinn get back on that plane and blowing all of those leads. The Falcons lose again. That keeps them right under us. I think they have four wins. You got Jacksonville. You got the Jets. Some sorry-ass teams out there. You got the Chargers. You know, I don't know exactly where we stand, but if we lose again next week, all in terms of purposes, we're picking in the top 10. Do we get the best receiver off the board? Do we go get the you know best or maybe second best corner off the board? What are we doing next year's draft? Are we try to draft the edge rusher in the top 10. Nobody's really jumping out there as being a, a top 10 level edge rusher. Do we just get the best guy off the board because we need an edge rusher? I, I don't know. I know we need to do something. Right now, my money's on. No matter where we land in the draft, trying to get the best receiver on the board when our pick comes. If that's the number two receiver off the board, dare I say it, even number three, we need a a weapon for Daniel Jones to be able to show and prove what he really could actually do. Yes, we need a second corner to go on the opposite side of James Bradbury, but right now I think wide receiver is more pressing. And if we're in that top 8 to 13 spot, I think we should be drafting a wide receiver. So this is a little draft talk for you right here. Uh, we can find an edge rusher in free agency. We can find another cornerback in free agency. But receivers translate from rookie season to impact a lot quicker than corners. We haven't really seen that leap where a corner comes in first year and just immediately is able to be that guy. A receiver can do that for you. And that would be my tentative. That would be something that would hold me back from drafting a receiver. I mean, drafting a cornerback with our first pick because I don't see immediate impact 
from a cornerback. Even like Jeffrey Okuda for, for the Lions. He was supposed to be this generational talent. They drafted him all the way up as high as, I think, three. I, I don't see him doing gangbusters-like stuff for Detroit. You know, so a receiver can can give that to you. And I'm seeing receivers that were drafted just this year give that to their teams. So, Giants fans. Oh, and the Knicks just blew out the Bucks. Go figure, right? 20. Cover that next. But, uh, Giants fans, how do you feel about our playoff chances? Do you want us to go to the playoffs? Do you want us to lose to the Cowboys? Listen, if you're a Giants fan that wants us to just lose another game for draft rights, I, and you can't really say that with the playoffs in hand. You you know, if we win a game but Washington wins and we're out of the playoffs anyway, I don't know how I feel about that. Do I want to lose to the Cowboys? No. I want to beat the Cowboys at every chance? Yes, if we play flag football against the Cowboys in the middle of, I don't know, July, I want to beat them. So, you know, let me know in the comments how you feel. How do you feel about our chances? The Cowboys are trending up. We're trending down. Think we got a chance against any of the playoff teams if we make it? You know, where are you at? How do you feel about the Ravens loss? How do you feel about Dan Jones? I want to hear all of these things. Let's talk Giants. And, um, I don't know. I'm out. Kiss my Wonder Woman 1984 review should be coming before this video or after this video. One or the other if you haven't seen the movie or if you haven't seen the movie. Mild spoilers and I'm out. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like these videos, you can click my face here to subscribe or here to watch more videos. Or was it here to subscribe and here to watch more? How did we set this up again?